How did that fucking bend over? What the fuck? Nobody's touched it. That's... Unless it's... No, it can't be. It looks warped. And welcome back to another video. This time, uh, I've decided to do Tales from the Basement. Uh, this is our new entry in the uh, storylines that we've been doing. If you haven't heard the uh, stories before, I I used to play D&D, &D, and I'd write them down, and then I'd write a short story about them, of what's actually going on. However, I've stopped doing that because a lot of the times I would get overworked and distracted. That was the other one. Distracted by the game. So, um, this time I actually recorded it as a podcast, and we, uh, even though we had a couple people in the shop talking, um... I'll definitely bring my uh, task uh, test cam. I always get it wrong. Uh, my task cam in next time and record because I find it to be very easy for me to do note taking now. Just to do that and then just play it back and then go through and pick up certain things. So I do have notes from the game and I will explain the story as I usually do. Um, I'm actually going to be leaving the leaving the players' names out. And then discussing how we are playing the game. Let's do this. So, first things first. Let's get this out of the way. We are... I didn't take the book to the shop. But we are playing uh, Tyrion of Dragons. And it's a two-part story. So you do Court of the Dragon Queen and then Rise of Tiamat. This is by far, allegedly, the uh, worst campaign to run next to Princess of the Apocalypse. So, let me put that back real quick. Quick side note. I have this, and it's bigger than this bookcase, and it's bothering me. Just wanted to say that. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, just for a little gag. Um, so, like you've heard a little bit already, uh, I said I was doing it at the game shop. So, this is not really Adventurers League. We're not considering... Event, especially with Tasha's Cauldron coming out, we're not considering um, Adventure League rules anymore because they're slowly changing again, and we just want to be able to play a game and not worry about certain things. So at this point, I I'm just done. I just I want to be able to play stuff and have fun. That's my main goal. Um, so uh, first things first is how did we run it at the game shop? Uh, very strict rules. So far, we got away with doing RSVP only. So we have to keep up with our players and our DM to make sure that they're available for the following Sunday that we're going to be playing. Uh, we, as um, volunteers or event coordinators, whatever I, whatever they can give us a name for it, I use to say volunteers, um, we've been taking on the responsibility of cleaning down the chairs and the tables for them so they don't have to worry as much. But... Uh, for this story, as usual, uh, the player's names and the DM's name has been uh, redacted for their protection. So, uh, no, you're not going to know their names. Uh, it's only fair. And also, re the podcast, even though I uploaded it onto a SoundCloud account for people to listen to, uh, it is very bad audio. And I can understand if it sounds like we say a lot of bad stuff, I do apologize. It's not like we are saying the actual bad stuff, but I know when I was hearing it back, I'm like, wait a moment, I think this could go wrong ways. But um, I know it's like three hours long, but uh, we did about an hour and a half, paused for a little break, then we came back. But uh, it, it, it did happen at straight forward, as I'm going to tell you. Uh, and once again, if you don't believe me, we have the podcast. So uh, this time, with the limited seating, we only had four players? No. Five players plus the DM, but we only had three available. We had two, uh, we had one new guy, and we had our, our regular comes back. Um, and then me, I was filling in because we had a three-man party. Uh, I do not recommend uh, running this three-level, or three first-level players through the beginning of this. Because uh, we almost completely died, and if you don't know, this is the... Uh, 
green nest uh, invasion. Well, that's what I'm calling it. Uh, so what happened was is I started off as keyword started off as uh, <laughs> a half elf mage, but I am playing it as the Outback Mage. Uh, it's a running gag through Tumblr and Reddit that there's like a Outback Mage type character where you know you deal with the Outback and there's like super stupid Australian jokes with it. But you know what I. I wanted to try it, and how I did it, and if you actually, actually, if you want me to show you the character build for it, I wouldn't mind doing a video on it, on how I do my Outback Mage, but you can do it multiple ways, and one of the ways you have to is you have to start off as a wizard first, and then you have to subclass into a druid, or an artificer, or I was thinking about going a ranger, but... Later on, I will explain what had happened to me, because I'm going Artificer now, due to the mere fact of what had happened. Um, so, we had me playing the Outback Mage, and we had the Halfling Barbarian, which was... Re he wasn't... I don't want to say he was full-blown stupid. He had eight intelligence, but he just wanted to beat the shit out of everything. So he had the, uh, the the audacity to just be like, I'm just going to punch and punch away. Like every barbarian should have, if played correctly. Uh, and then we had the half-elf half, half elf life cleric. Uh, this, however, uh, <laughs> worked out to our favor because we had a healer, but he kind of he kind of just wanted to do heals at the same time, just do something. So we told him he could play anything he wanted. Uh, as long as it was, our, like I said in our one video, uh, yeah, no, I don't even remember. Uh, Wiz Wizard of the Coast has a set rules for Avengers League, but for us, we did Player's Handbook plus one or two book minimum, which it could be Volos Race plus Xanathar's class or Tomb of Foes Race plus Xanathar's class, but as long as the DM approved it. Um, what else? Because Tasha's cauldron is going to change everything. What else was there? Uh, he let us do, our DM let us do anything. Like, we could be like five wizards, but if we all did wizards and we died, that's on us. Uh, by the end of our story, we did, however, um, almost die. He kind of just gave it to us because we. There's, it's the first uh, chapter of the game. It shouldn't be that hard, but we, our, our plan had fallen apart by that point. So, uh, we have the three of us. And we start off as uh, debt collectors. We are picking up some debt from Granny Smith. And, uh, of course, it went pretty well. You know, we were trying to talk to her, and our barbarian intimidated her to give us the uh, 12 silver. And then the second job we had in Baldur's Gate was uh, we were shit diggers. Shit. S-H-I-T. Diggers. D. I G G D R. You see where I'm getting at where this just sounds really bad. Um, later on, we switched it to sh the shit squad just to make it uh, easier to say because it was just getting super bad. Uh, but we were digging uh, trenches, ladrines for irrigation, and a gnomish Irishman kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of character showed up. And uh, he's called Ernest, and I'm like, you know what? You're you're just you're just gonna play this like uh, Jim Jim Harney or whatever the the old Ernest. And uh, we couldn't remember towards the end. We couldn't remember the cousin's name that we were going towards Green Nest for, which our DM continuously kept switching the name, and we're like, but isn't it this? And then we refer to uh, the other green name he had already used, and he goes, ah, crap. So it was just a running gag for us to mess with him like that. He was doing a good job. I, I will gi I will give him that. He was doing a good job because we have, we would say we are about intermediate DMs. We don't like do this constantly. We love. I would love to do it constantly because I like to be a storyteller. But I digress. Um, he was playing Ernest for us, and Ernest found us digging up manure and building trenches. He was like, "Hey, I got a job for you. You want to?" Come to Greenness and help my cousin sell manure. And I just was like, nope, 
Nope, I don't I don't like manure. I'll do you can do it for five gold. Can we do it for seven? Sure. So we ended up going and on the ride there, uh, we can see from in the distance that Green Nest got attacked. So we get down there, there seems to be cultists and a dragon flying around destroying the town. So first thing we do when we get there is try to get Ernest and some what is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, family, I guess would be the best way to say. And uh, a woman we tried to rescue in one of the buildings. Uh, which almost failed. Thank God it didn't. And we got them to the keep. That was our first goal. Once we got there, um, <laughs> same thing happened again. He could, he's horrible with names, but we kept like making up names to help him. Uh, Captain uh, Esperanza, or uh, what was it? What's the guy, the general from uh, Cuba or Brazil? Uh, whatever. You get the point if you listen to the podcast. Uh, but he ends up saying espresso later. And we're like, ah, it's espresso, like I said. Because we were making a joke like he was going to say it later. Um, he wanted us to help out as much as we can. Uh, we were kind of beaten up a bit. We were first level. Like, I, I don't, me, the cleric lost the most health the barbarian like got a couple scratches on him um and the weird part was the cleric had like an 18 ac so he was getting hit pretty hard when um they got his ac so um we would go to uh lady mc lady, lady labeth who was our who was green green ness's uh, healer and she would heal us up um somehow we uh Kind of did not please her when we were like, yeah, we're the shit squad. We shovel shit. And she just kind of like, oh, oh, good. Um, but we ended up getting rehealed. We, I don't think we got any supplies that time around. I think at best the barbarian got an axe. So he got a great axe to use. We, I don't think we got, I, I got a healer's kit then, which we never got to use, which we needed to use. Um, nevertheless, our first mission from the keep was to go to the mill, because, uh, Captain Espresso needed help at the mill, and if you have run this campaign before, there are multiple things going on, but he chose to send us to the mill, which was fine. Like, I haven't played the opening to this, I've played further deep, like, further on in the campaign. Uh, however, ooh, it's on tip my tongue. However, we get to the bridge that crosses between the city and the uh, mill of grain and all that, and uh, we wipe out a couple kobolds. Most of the most of the creatures we had around us was cultist kobolds, and instead of like dragonborn, it was like half dragon, which are like big, like, buff guys. Um, but though the half dragon didn't show up toward the end. However, what happened was, was we got to the mill, and more gar more kobolds started to come, and we had to think fast. We were gonna get either boxed in, or we're gonna have a hard time trying to get across the bridge because we're gonna have to fight them. So this is where the artificer story comes into uh, play. I sat there. I'm like, is there any oil? Can we find any oil? And we had like. Our barbarian put two barrels in front of the door to block the door, and there were open barrels. And I'm like, okay, okay, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Because we climb up to like the second story where the window is that's open for like a barn, and we're like, well, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And um, first thing we do is uh, see the guys retreat, come back with more guys, and as they're marching up, I get the idea. Is there any oil? I roll, roll pretty high on perception. And I find some oil. Not much, but enough to at least, if I was to light something on fire with a particular spell, would cause a chain reaction explosion. Hear me out. <laughs> this is where I'm MacGyver. It's broken, but hear me out. Um, because how I did it, there's two ways I could do it, and I figured I'd waste a spell slot on blowing up the sparrow and getting a little bit of fire everywhere with hay versus just 
not having an explosion that would knock out a couple of guys. Something to at least buy his time, because there was only three of us. So, we find some oil, we stuff the barrels full of hay, like to the brim, packed in there, and I basically balance out the oil between both uh, barrels, because I was going to have the barbarian throw the barrel, and he threw, he threw just about right. He didn't throw over past them, and he didn't throw too close or too uh, close to us so we had enough uh, distance so that was the plan I was to have him throw it and then i would blast it with a magic missile i was gonna target magic missile because i figured firebolt wouldn't do crap to it firebolt would probably light it on fire but not actually explode it magic missile would explode it which would be fine for what i was doing the the cleric had to just kick the barrel and then I would waste another magic missile to explode it, um, which was fine. It worked out pretty well because it just made a concussive explosion. Um, we knocked out a few, a few of the guys, and then we managed to hold out there for a bit until the guard showed up. Once the guard showed up, we went back to the keep. Once we got back to the keep, we had a large dragon, which at the time, I think... In the beginning, we couldn't really see it. We rolled really low on protection, but at the time when the keep was getting attacked, we found out it was a blue dragon. So I'm like, okay, great. What do we do? Um, the town's the town's guard or captain, Captain Espresso, was like, okay, well, you either can kill the dragon or get it away from the keep. We had, oh yeah, the cleric got a hand crossbow because he he wanted to try doing it like i don't want to say two-handed but he wanted to shoot in one hand and hold a shield kind of a deal and his hand crossbow jammed and it and it broke but i i plan on repairing it when i can get the mending spell which i think i picked up picking up one level of artificer um but i digress uh the barbarian tried throwing a javelin at the uh, dragon and it's missing i fire from my light crossbow and get its attention a bit but then I had the brainstorm idea. I'm going to Ian Malcolm this. And I'm going to take a torch. And I'm going to run out of the keep. I'm going to get maybe 60 feet away from the keep. While this dragon is circling. And I told the cleric before I started running. Just watch my back. Because as long as he has... I think I even gave him the light crossbow. As long as he's got, if I got the dragon distracted, he can get a couple shots on the dragon while I got him distracted. And the DM's just looking at me like, you are ballsy. You are absolutely insane. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I got an idea. And then I explained to him like what I was trying to do, which was, you said to get the dragon away from the keep. So the best way to get the dragon away from the keep is if I bring them over to these couple buildings over here where there's three streets, I can use the buildings for cover and jump street to street trying to get the dragon's attention away from the keep, giving me ample time to keep the keep alive while the cleric's trying to shoot this flying dragon. He also told me, by doing this, I have chances of random encounters because there are kobolds, there are cultists, in this town looting ah to each their own i will take that challenge because it was worth the risk trying to save people so what ended up happening was we didn't get the any of the encounters um i nearly died and the barbarian decided to destroy a cabbage cart because that was i think that was espresso's cabbage cart or like everybody enjoyed the cabbage cart we are making that as a joke um, but once uh, we successfully got the dragon to go away, because we weren't going to kill it at level 1, there's no way. There's no way. We weren't that skilled at it. Um, we were basically town heroes, and uh, that's when we came up with the name Shit Squad. We are Shit Squad. Uh, so far, Shit Squad just heroes of fortune looking for the most insane things to do just to earn a little bit of gold. Uh, we ended up getting a key to a crypt underneath the keep that will lead us to the church. Somehow, and I noticed the continuity error, but I'm just like, yeah, just let it happen, because 
I don't know how that happened. Ernest's cousin wasn't in the keep, but he had heard rumors that he was at the church. So he used the keep's tunnel to get to the uh, church, which was, it led right outside town. It was on outskirts by the trees. So it cut, a, it cut down some time trying to get through encounters in the city. So what ended up happening was, is we get down there and there's a large gate and the only way um, we can get unlocked is the tiefling has to, sorry, it's not tiefling, uh, halfling has to crawl through like a little spot and then he can unlock it with the key. He proceeds to keep smashing his axe by it and I'm like, do you want the key? No, I'm gonna keep smashing it. Do you want the key? No, I'm gonna keep smashing it. The DM kind of looks, do you want the key? Because the whole point of that puzzle was to have the key to unlock it and help the party get along. Um, and then he realizes, oh yeah, maybe that would be a good idea. Um, which, of course, the player, we always, the DM and that player and me, we played before. We already are having a good time, so the jokes just keep on coming. The new player actually did have fun, and he's having a good time with us. We're hoping we can get maybe two more players next game or even after the whole apocalypse or pandemic stops we can get more players in but as of this moment we are basically uh just three guys playing this uh so we get to the church church we see a battering ram go up to the door and the cobalt are ready to smash it down there are six cobalts two cultists and a half dragon that's what we're considering them the, the big bulky guys so, instead of just going over to the two cultists and the half dragon that's blocking the door, I get the idea because we had gotten a grappling hook before we went through the crypt. I'm gonna jump over the jump over the wall because there's like a little stone wall to jump over. We had to climb a little bit to get over it. Take the barbarian and me, and we're gonna go towards the door, sneak up on the kobold, and kill them. Um, we did take, so my camera decided to just turn off. I think it's overheating again, because always with these fucking cameras. This is why I quit recording YouTube stuff, is because I get these stupid problems that YouTubers never deal with. Um, but like I said, uh, this, uh, this thing, um, it's custom made one that I made from, uh, MZ445 some Miguel, uh, Zavalos and stuff. Uh, I do like his stuff, and I do kind of remix it a bit, but trying to get that idea to remix it is hard for me. Um, I I am making the Outback Mage, and I will have a picture on my Instagram for it, but uh, to each their own kind of a thing. I, it's not, I don't do remixing for fun. I do remixing because I just want to, and I don't profit off of it. I just do it for fun. Same thing with 3D printing. I just do it for fun. Back to the story. Uh, so... I have an idea of sneaking up on the Cobalts and doing Burning Hands. They were weak to Burning Hands, so I figured, bam, I do that and do some damage. Um, I get rid of the first three groups pretty well because I rolled really high and did almost all their HP. The second group didn't do that well. So I look at the Barbarian I just go, start pushing that battering ram away from the door because the plan was before we jumped the wall was to get the battering ram that's on top of the hill. I don't have any representation of a battering ram. So get the battering ram on top of the hill to go down towards where the half dragon and the two cultists are while the cleric is distracting them and persuading them on his god, which is Helm. Um, he did a pretty good job until we managed to screw up killing the last three uh, kobolds. Um, the two cultists came running towards us, and the cleric went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the half-dragon. So, um, I keep telling the barbarian, like, keep trying to push it, and every time we push it, we move about three feet. Three feet. <laughs> three feet. We needed 18 feet for it to go. And, this, and the Barbarian is like, are you kidding me? I'm this strong and I'm rolling this low? So we ended up giving up, killing the Cobalts, and the 
cultist killed me. I got killed and tied up. And the cleric got decked by the half dragon. So the barbarian runs and hides with the townsfolk underneath the, uh, the church. So we're sitting there going, oh god, what is he going to do? He wants to intimidate the scared townsfolk to fight. We go, wait a moment. Don't do that. They're already scared. You should try to persuade them. You should have almost the same points in persuasion. He looks and he goes, eh, I'm, no, no, try to persuade them. And he rolls pretty high on persuasion. And the next thing you know is he comes out of the, the uh, crypt or the cellar. And he's got a mob behind him of just pitchforks and just these people. And Ernest is like, yeah, we got this. His cousin goes, I'm behind you, cousin. We got this. Let's get these guys. And uh, the DM starts rolling for it. And his jaw starts to drop. As these, <laughs> these commoners, these townsfolk are just stabbing the crap out of the half dragon and the cultists. Just wiping them out. There was, by the point we were unconscious, they were uh, no cobalt left. I had killed them before I died. And uh, the plan was, is if we didn't get through this part of the encounter, uh, the cleric and me would end up getting stuck with the uh, half-dragon's actual leader and be imprisoned. So this was a way to get us out kind of a thing. I don't, I honestly don't think he tried fudging because the look on his face was priceless just seeing him go, are you serious? After three times of just rolling for commoners. Uh, so we managed to get through that and we left off at the keep. We stopped at the keep. However, I'm a little hazy on where we're going next. Um, again, I'm not even reading the book to make sure, but that's how our, our game went for about three hours. So um, if you guys enjoyed the story, like, comment, and subscribe. I hate saying that every single time, but it's true. The only way I will make more content is if I understand that you guys like the content or you guys uh, post in the comments below what else you want to hear, whether it be uh, DM tips, uh, book reviews, different RPGs like I have Pathfinder, Starfinder, this uh, Firefly one. But thank you guys for watching and listening to this. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm leaving.